We're at Friends House in London, the home of the British Quakers, and I'm talking to John Turner, who's a farmer, and he's the organiser of an event called Food. There's a story behind everything we eat, and he's going to talk to us about why Quakers should be spending their time looking at food issues. So, John, why are they looking at food? Well, as far as I know, this is the first time in a number of years that they've actually uh, got a conference together, bringing people from all parts of the food chain together to look at it. And, of course, it's such a fundamental part of our lives. Um, Quakers have been involved in business over the years, things like the early bankers with, with Barclays, um, Industries such as um, Quakers, which have a um, sorry, such as Cadbury's, which have a you know very strong uh, Quaker tradition. But in food and farming, um, it, it's it's a fundamental part of our lives. But it's something that uh, you don't often see discussed in Quaker circles. Um, what are the issues that you are going to be looking at uh, at this event, and what are your concerns with regard to food? Well, I suppose it comes down to sustainable farming, and that's, I mean, sustainable in itself is a word that's um, hugely abused. It's open to, to lots of different interpretations to different people. But if you take the fundamental um, idea of where we go with food and farming, to use one planet's worth of resources, to leave a legacy of farming that's fit for fu future generations, that's, I suppose, the the grand vision, if you like, of where we would like to go with this. Um, the difficulty is where you go from where we are at the moment. And for a lot of farmers, that's actually quite a big jump. And you as a beef farmer are trying to feed your cattle just on pasture. W w explain that to us. Well, that's something that's come out of this dialogue of how we feed 9 billion people by 2050, this growing world population, um, with all the other pressures on land, um, you know, all the other things that land's got to do for us. But one of, one of the crazy things is we're using grain and soya, um, a lot of concentrate feed in animal production. And quite often these are ruminant animals that were never designed for these sorts of um, cereals. And therefore as such, they're actually not that efficient at converting those, those grains. What it means is that we're using a huge amount of land to produce livestock, um, whereas if we were using grass, which is what they were designed as animals to, uh, you know, to, to use as a food, it frees up a huge amount more land for growing crops for direct human consumption. And um, what, in your ideal world, would you like to see come out of this conference and come out of your work over the next couple of years? I started off by saying there's this huge gap between where we are now and where we would like to be. And experience, even with something like the Pasture-Fed Livestock Association, has been that the people who bring the real solutions are quite often those from outside farming. We can do a certain amount as farmers, but we need people who have got a knowledge of uh, communication, people who've got a knowledge of uh, financial structures, transport, logistics, processing. They're all skills that we need to make these chains work. Um, and the hope is that by bringing people together, at least if we can understand where some of the problems are, where some of the challenges are, that out there there'll be people with solutions who say, ah, I can help with this, or I can, I can bridge that little bit of the gap, and that we will have this process of transition where farmers and everybody else can be, see themselves moving along a path towards this ideal of sustainable farming. Great. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time, John. So that was John Turner. You can find out more about what he does at pasturefed.org. Uh, and I'm Patrick Chalmers, reporting for Quakers and Business.